What's up, dudes and dudettes? Welcome to Everybody Podcasts, and this is a segment we like to call Everybody's Tough, where we take a look at the ultimate fighter, UFC's take on a reality TV show. I'm joined with Cody here, as always. I'm what Chad. Up? We're taking a look at Season 29, Episode 12. We're in the semifinals. This is the last semifinal fight before the finale. Um, we got Treshawn Gore against... Um, what the hell is his name? Something Urbina. Uh, Gilbert Urbina. Gilbert Urbina. Yes. And um, I I was honestly... I was pulling for Urbina in this fight. Oh, I was gore all the way. Yeah. I and, was gore all the way because I wanted to see, which we're not fucking getting now, but I wanted to see gore versus battle. I wanted that. I want to see that fight, and I still I still have faith that it's going to happen. Yeah. Even though, uh, well, it's, uh, we'll save that for later. But, yeah, that's the fight that I wanted to happen for the finals was gore versus battle. Yep. So we got, obviously, uh, Treshawn Gore won the fight um, like a spectacular knockout yeah so he knocked him down like he knocked him down three, three times. times and then knocked him out that fourth time mm -hmm. and it was it was uh it was a pretty decent fight um i feel like treshawn gore's biggest problem was he would he would throw one punch and then back away like he didn't really follow up right but every time he touched him he hurt him though, like at, like every single time, like even just with his jabs. Every jab you could just see on Urbina's face, he was feeling it. Like, yeah, it dude. Was, it wasn't. It wasn't like he was just giving him little love taps. He was fucking. He he was fucking him up. That dude hits like a fucking truck. Yeah, man. dude. After that first knockdown, you could see in Urbina's eyes, like, oh shit, this motherfucker ain't no joke. And he wasn't no joke. Yeah, he straight sat him down in the first round. He straight sat him down three times. Yep. Just with two of them, I think, were just with jabs. Just a jab to the face. It put him right on his fucking ass. Yep. And uh, so we did get some news this week. Unfortunately, Treshawn Gore suffered an injury during that fight. It was his meniscus? I well, think I this... think it was during fight camp. I don't. Was it during... Oh, okay. I, I assumed it was during fight camp. Okay. Well, anyways, he, we found out this news earlier this week. I'm like, man, I want to say it was like the night after. Yeah, Wednesday or Thursday, yeah. maybe. Um, he got a meniscus injury, and uh, he's not going to be able to fight in the finale. Which there isn't a finale. There's not. It's not really a finale now. Yeah, it's not really a finale now. But Which so I think it's lame. I think they should have just fucking made a finale. We're gonna see Brian Battle against Gilbert Urbina. Um, I don't like it because Urbina lost. Man, Brian Battle shouldn't have to fight that guy. I know. I'd almost since they're not doing an actual finale. I'd almost rather they just waited until Gore was better. I guess that's kind of unfair for Battle though. You know he's he should have his he's he's been through a whole fight camp now. Yeah, he should have his opportunity, but it's still like I don't know. I just really want to see that fight. Yeah, I think the uh, even Dana White was saying at the end of this episode like that's gonna be a great fight, Gore versus Battle. Like that's something I feel like just has to happen no matter what. Like it just needs to happen at some point because it's gonna it's gonna be a war. I mean you got fucking Gore. Who maybe he only throws one or two punches at a time, but he hits like a fucking truck. Mm -hmm. And then you got Battle, who's like just a, a really active technical striker. And I just love those matchups. Yep. He keeps his distance very well. Brian yeah. Battle. He's very tall. A and tall so guy. What do you think what do you think's gonna happen like when Gore is able to fight? Who do you think he's gonna fight? Cause if Battle wins against Urbina, that would mean Battle gets his contract, right? Yeah, and it would be also kind of an insult to battle to make him fight Gore directly after that, right? Yeah. I could see them maybe if Urbina wins, having them do a rematch, Gore versus Urbina. Yeah. Or even if, if Urbina wins, then do battle versus Gore. I wouldn't be upset with that, but I feel like if if battle wins, you should give him somebody who's already established in the UFC. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe not like a main event person or anything like that, but give him give him somebody who's had one or two fights in the UFC, you know, let him progress 
farther up because then having him fight Gore seems like a step back. But yeah, at the same time, I want to see that fight. Yeah, absolutely. Like I'm, I just uh, what I don't want to see happen is because like Dana White said that Treshawn Gore will get his opportunity. What I don't want to happen is for them to get, just go. All right, here's a contract, kid. Because then that's an even bigger slap in the face to Brian Battle. If they were, kind of. If they were to just give Treshawn Gore a contract. I would assume that they're giving the winner a better contract than they would anybody else. Because I was looking at who was going to be on that fight, and I was surprised they didn't have a couple more guys from the season on there. Like, I wouldn't mind seeing Vincent Murdoch get another shot. Yeah, right. Get his shot to have, like, a prelim fight in the UFC. Yeah, put him, put him up against somebody else in the house. Put him up against fucking Dustin Lampros or fucking... Rittenhouse or somebody, you yeah. know, put him up against somebody else that was also because that's what I liked about the finale. That's why I was upset that they're not doing a finale. They're just going to put him on put the him fight on a night. fight night because yep. during the finales, they always just stack it with all the other fighters in the house. And that's kind of what I wanted to see was like give these guys another opportunity to put on a show, you know, like maybe they lost their fights in the house. But I think there's definitely guys in there that are they're fucking worth being in the UFC or at least worth getting a shot to prove that they belong there, you know? Yeah. They yeah. are going to have Andre uh Petrosky. He's going to be on that fight on that card. Really? Yeah, he's fighting, I believe, right before Ricky Tercios and uh Brady he stand. He's the fight right before that. It's him versus uh Michael Gilmore. Oh, okay. Who, they, who Urbina had to fight to re yeah. replace what's his name? I can't remember what his name is now. Miles, Miles something. We yeah, had Andre and that guy Hunsinger? are gonna fight. Was it Huntsinger? Huntsinger maybe? Maybe. But it, in which also is another like you're having this guy who had one fight in the house and lost that fight fight the guy who was the favorite to win now in the house. It's like why? But you're not having anybody else fight on that card. Like. Yeah. It seems like they – it's just disappointing to me that they didn't put more of the guys from the house onto the card. Yeah, yeah. Is this – the uh, this card is fight night, August 28th. This is the Edson Barboza card, Yeah, right? Barboza versus Chickadaisy. Yeah, okay. Which, what a fight that's going to be. Yeah, dude. Oh that my is going to be such a fucking awesome fight. Like, no way is that not going to be a fucking banger. Yeah, dude. I'm really excited. And I'm super stoked that Brian Battle is getting the co-main slot. Yeah, that's Brian crazy. Brian Battle and Urbina getting the co-main. That's yeah, awesome. At least they're doing that for him. But I also, I don't know when Ortega and Volkanovski are going to fight. Isn't that in September? September 25th. I might as well just let them wait a month and put them on that card. Yeah, right? You know? Like, why Like why not just put them on the card with their fucking coaches? Unless yeah, they're, dude. Because, I, I mean, I if I had to guess, they're not going to still be being coached by those guys at this point. They they probably went through their camp with their normal coaches rather than Ortega and Volkanovski. Yeah. Because Volkanovski and Ortega, I assume, are going through a camp right now. Of their own. Yeah, so they're probably not going to want to be focused on coaching these guys that they only knew for a month, you know? Yeah. And then Volkanovski and Ortega, they're a little, a little over a month from their fight, so yeah, they're definitely obviously in a camp right now. They don't have time to do anything else. Yeah, I just I can't help but just mention how disappointed I am that we're not going to get Battle versus Gore. <laughs> I, know. I just remembered the fucking their face off at the end of the episode was the best face off. Like fucking, they were both just like talking shit to each other during the face off. Oh, it's so disappointing. Yeah. Oh, so disappointed, I think, dude. Treshawn Gore is like a super monotone dude. His voice never changes. His uh, his demeanor never changes. Like yeah, and any... then battle is the opposite. He's yeah. like super like I don't want to say flamboyant isn't the right word, but he's super like high energy yeah, and like I always smiling and always really happy and just seems like he's always having a good time. He's still my favorite. I still hope that he beats Urbina. Yeah, I do too. I want to see Battle get that contract. And, uh, man, I didn't know Ortega had kids. Yeah, he even said that in the episode. He's like, I don't think anybody realizes it, but I do have kids. Yeah, dude. And so, they're old. Like, they they look like he had them when he was a teenager. Yeah, dude. I, uh... And his, bro his little brother looks just fucking like him. Oh, yeah, looks dude. Looks exactly like him. Fucking crazy, right? I, uh... 
Yeah, when he mentioned he had kids, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, <laughs> and then he's like, uh, private private life happy life or whatever yeah which i i would agree with yeah i totally you don't agree want to with fucking too. always have your kids in the spotlight all the time that's not good for them yeah no nah, no nah, sir you see how many f- fucked up child stars we have nowadays or that were child stars and now they're just all fucked up because they had all this money as a kid and they were in the spotlight and they're just growing up different like that yeah not good for a kid yeah, and then I thought it was pretty cool. Volkanovski had him over to his house. Well, yeah. I assume it's not his house. I think he lives in Australia. But mm-hmm. had him over to where he's staying and cooked them all food and shit. That Fucking was pretty breakfast, dope. breakfast, dude. Hell yeah, man. Made me hungry. <laughs> See all that bacon, dude? I know. You know, the big-ass pan of bacon. It did the look fuck? like he cooked it, though. Yeah, I like, know, He was, right? like, pulling it off, and it was still fucking pink. How do you like your bacon? Crispy or kind of, like... Almost burned. Word like Woo. almost like really close to being burned. That's how I like my bacon. All right. I mean, I guess I kind of like it that way too. I like really crispy bacon. Like bite into it and it's just crunch, crunch, crunch. That's so that's technically almost burnt. Yeah, just not black. Yeah, like I want it like right before it turn starts to turn black. That's how I like it. So you like put bacon in and just let it cook for like fucking twenty minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah. So, all right. Well, Brian Battle's going to fucking win this whole fucking thing. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> what about, um? I think Tercios is going to beat He Stands. Oh, well. yeah. Oh, my God. Almost I almost forgot about the other one. <laughs> keep forgetting about the Bantamweights, dude. <laughs> there's, well, there's been so much, so much shit involving the middleweights at this point, you know? Yeah. So, I think... Uh, Tercios can, he can, obviously, he can take some damage, and he can keep going. Brady Heastan is pretty dominant and always pushes forward, but Tercios also pushes forward a lot. And Tercios has, like, a, he has a wild style that I don't think a lot of people are prepared for most of the time, you know? Yeah, yep. And, like, the way that he just puts on pressure, and I don't know, he's just, he's a very, I feel like he would be a really hard fighter to train for because he's just... His movement is, like, so unique, you know? And he's so active. He's so... He's got so much energy, you know? He's got so much... He's always moving in his fights. I feel like he stand is going to try to wrestle him. For sure. But I don't think... we didn't. I don't think we saw a lot of Tercios' groundwork. I don't remember... I can't quite remember the first fight. But if I remember right, we didn't see a lot of his groundwork. Nope. But it was talked about a lot. You know, it was talk. Anybody that was talking about him talked about how well rounded he was and how good he was on the ground, even though we saw mostly striking out of him. So, yeah, in the fights, it was probably mostly he did probably did a lot of groundwork during training and stuff like that. And yeah. Workouts and whatnot, sparring. And he's got the age and the experience over He Stan, too. Cause I keep forgetting He Stan's only 22 years old. Yeah, dude, he's a young and it's he's the youngest guy that's in the house right now. Yeah, well, they're all out of the house now all over now oh yeah yeah but yeah he was the youngest guy on the season only 22 years old which is crazy young to be in the ufc nowadays i I suppose it wasn't that like i mean you know you got holloway and uh oh chase hooper they're both they were both really young when they started but it's yeah you don't see it very often holloway was only like 20 years old right i think he was 19 damn I think it was the same with Chase Hooper. I think Chase Hooper might have been 18, 19 when he first got in the UFC, too. Yeah, I remember Chase Hooper, a pretty young dude. Well, it's, it, I feel like it went against him, though. It was working against him because now now that he's gotten up to such a high level, he hasn't been performing as well. Yeah. And he just doesn't – I mean, he just doesn't have the experience, I think, that he needed when he got into the UFC. Yeah. That's what worries me about those young guys. You know, you don't want to – I mean – it's kind of like with Gastelum. Gastelum was real young when he started, too, because I just I didn't even think of it, but when we watched the fight last night, he was 29 years old when that fucking... Yeah. Or, well, he's 29 years old now, and he's been in the UFC for fucking... It was such a long time, you know? And that's got to be working against him to be so young and just be up against such a high le- caliber of fucking fighters, you know? Yeah, dude, because everybody, everybody that Gastelum's fought, no joke, dude. They're all no joke. No, like he's ne- they've former, never former former champions, just uh, fucking top ranked guys. They never give him 
They never give him somebody who's not fucking in the top 10. Never. Yeah. Like, he's never fought somebody. If he fought somebody who wasn't in the top 10, they made it to the top 10 pretty quickly after they fought him. Yeah, he stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Adesanya. God, that was that was a tremendous fight. Oh, I love that fight. Oh, it's the best fight, I think, of all time. Gaslam, he tweeted last night after his fight, and he's like, I think I won that one, but whatever. Oh, against um, Cannon here? Yeah, yep. He was definitely... There's a couple of rounds that could have won e went either way, but I I don't think he won. Yeah. I think uh, Cannon here won. I agree with you. Totally. I, uh... I just thought... I thought Cannon here would have... I mean, he did throw a lot of big shots. He did say he was looking for the knockout. He wanted to finish, but... I mean, he that... dropped him twice. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's hard to say, it's hard to argue for your winning after you, when you were dropped twice and you didn't drop him at all. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't get any takedowns. I mean, did he even get, did he get any takedowns at all? I don't think so. I think he was like 0-7 at the end of the fight, which it's just, it sucks. Because I like Gastelum a lot. I do too, man. He's one of those guys that I always root for, mm -hmm. even though I might think he might lose. Like when he fought Whitaker, I knew Whitaker was going to win, but I was like, come on, Gastelum. And that was a great fight, too. It was. And that's the thing about Gastelum. Even when he loses, he's in bangers. Like, he keeps losing, but he loses, like, in the best fashion. You know, he doesn't get knocked out or, like, I mean, I think he's been submitted before. But he rarely gets submitted, rarely gets knocked out. He loses by decision in fights that are fucking wars. Yep. Yep. And that's, that mean, that's a good fighter right there. That's a good fighter right there. He's just so fucking tough. I hope they still keep him around. I think he's on, like, a three-fight losing streak now. Yeah. It would, it would suck to see them, like, drop him and him have to go to Bellator or one or well, something like that. It's only a two-fight losing streak now because he beat, he beat that one guy, then he lost to Whitaker, and now he lost to Cannoneer. Right? Yeah, and he lost to Till right before that other fight, though. Who was, the, who, who was his last fight before Whitaker? Because I remember he beat that guy because he was, like, excited to be back in the win column. I can't remember who it was. Yeah, I'm going to look it up. Hell yeah, we should definitely look that shit up. Oh, I know I don't have my internet access back here. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, Never we'll, mind. We'll find out later. Yeah. <laughs> but, anyways, so, next week we're going to talk about... The finale fights, it's not really a finale. They're going to be on fight night on the card. The Edson Barboza versus, uh, what the hell is his name again? Giga Chickadaisy? Giga Chickadaisy. Or Chickadaisy or something? Is he, uh, what's his, uh, uh, origin? I just had it up. I literally was just looking at that before you got here. Chickadaisy. Chick. Is he s Swiss? I feel like he's Swiss. Uh, oh, it's from Georgia. Like the country Georgia, not the state. Oh, no shit. He's probably the only Georgian fighter in the UFC. I was going to say, how many, of, how many of them do we have in the UFC? Probably or none. Fighters in general, anyways. But, yeah. All right. Well, we'll catch you guys next week. We'll talk about these fights. I'm Chad. This is Cody. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. We want to push this channel. Um, you can find me. On Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, ChattyDub420. You can find Cody on Instagram, Scruff the Pothead. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out. Peace.